This is the Insomniacs Anonymous podcast. Please fasten your safety restraints now as we are experiencing pelvic turbulence. Today on the podcast, we talk about Night in the Woods and a few of the other games featured at PAX Prime this year. We talk about the super accessible game Butt Sniffing Pugs. Twitch now supports uploading videos and gets their own loot crate-like service called Twitch Prime. And finally, we talk about PewDiePie and Revel Mode's new game, PewDiePie's Tuber Simulator. Oh, and we read the Old Man Henderson story you voted for us to read last week. Stick around, the fun's just about to begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IA Podcast. This is October 4th, 2016. This is episode 21, right? I think so. Okay. Episode We're 21. Legal drinking. Huh, what? I said we're of legal drinking age. Yay! We the I podcast is that old now. What should its first drink be? Um, a rum runner. Okay, so if you happen to be of that legal drinking age, drink a rum runner in celebration Woo! of the I podcast's twenty first episode. And I'm should, uh, probably introduced ourselves already. I am dude, and with me today of the is... running. Yes, I am the dude of the running, and with me today is my good buddy. Shro of the box. Uh, okay. So how you doing today, Shro? What is awake? Uh, what is sleep? Is it a mere conscious perception of the world around us? I don't is know. Is there a world around us? Kirk, if you were to do that in a... Uh, William Shatner impression, it would still still be how exa- exactly how you said it. I was going to say, wasn't that basically a William Shatner impression? Yeah, but it was definitely your voice. Slightly left emphasis on strange syllables. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, I, uh, I, I've i slept about three hours, and I, the idea was I, I would sleep three hours... Uh, hang out for a bit. That's why I only slept three hours, is to uh, be awake for something else, and then go back to bed. But I got this weird dissonance of like I'm really motivated to do stuff, even though I feel like my legs are about to fall out of their skin with exhaustion. That's not good, dude. And I'm like, all right. Let's capitalize on this. Let's let's do some stuff. <laughs> and and now here I am. Cause up like, oh, you know, I'm I'm really tired. I should go. To, oh, the podcast is in like forty five minutes. I I should not go to bed because then I will sleep through the podcast again. And and dude, Redman will be very angry. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just a little. So so yeah. Now I'm just the extra extra weird loopies. How many podcasts have I done where I'm under a near near possibility of under drugs effects? That I was the most no dramatically idea. incorrect way I probably could have said that sentence. I have no idea. You never really tell me or anyone when that's the case. So, I mean, I was literally drinking for at least two podcasts. Um, Is that because of the drinking game we have? One of them, at least, was. Oh. <laughs> I think the other one I was just <laughs> casually drinking. <laughs> awesome. So, and, and yeah, take a shot. Yep. And I know the time that it, we did that, you guys, like, never actually said the trigger words. So I, <laughs> I, I was surprisingly sober by the end of that podcast. <laughs> so, like, I have a whole bottle of rum in front of me, and I'm just not drinking it. <laughs> so I'm waiting to be told to. <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, I've been sleep deprived multiple levels. Um, today is the woo loopy kind of just like high on pot kind of sleep deprived. It's like, whoa, man. Oh, man, there's so much and gaming stuff. I know, right? There's like. The buttons that you push and your character <laughs> does stuff, and it's like so <sighs> rad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
And then you but, um, hit a thing, and then stuff comes out, and it's so pretty. And man. you get that sweet loot. It's like <laughs> shiny and shit, man. <laughs> so yeah, and I know I've done a few podcast episodes with the um, the Shro may or may not have cocaine injected into his veins because he's <laughs> so sleep deprived that he's just fucking neurotic. <laughs> Love Woo! those ones. Yeah, those are usually pretty entertaining. Oh, yeah. That's what people tell me. Don't believe me. I'm like, nah, you really just need to make sure I don't sleep for like a day. And <laughs> it's way better than me having like seven beers or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so speaking of playing games while high, I don't know. Oh, Let's boy. talk about games. <laughs> Well, yeah, we were. I don't about actually games have well, drugs right? to play games, so. But, but that, I will segue. There is there is an Easter egg about about being high in gaming later mm. in the podcast. But uh, so <laughs> wait, what? I'm seeing a note okay. that I didn't see a second ago in the <laughs> notes. <laughs> I'm like reading it out loud. I'm like, wait, what? That's what? What? <laughs> Anyways. Um, everyone's talking about it at the moment. I don't understand it because I barely understand Twitch to begin with. The fuck is Twitch Prime and why the hell did Amazon, a item distributor and a weak distributor of video stuff with their Prime network subscription thingy and now suddenly has just kind of become Twitch? level up i don't know i don't even know what to call this to me it is really really strange i feel like walmart just bought a major gaming distributor or something it's quite bizarre It'd be like if walmart bought fucking ea or something or square enix well it's not I'm just, unheard I'm just of confused. for a company to invest in another company true like, i've this kind of floored me, but there's a Chinese mining company that bought the developers of RuneScape, and that floored me upon hearing that. And I'm sure a lot of people who play RuneScape are wondering why. I'm sure it's just to invest in the money and say, oh, hey, we, we want, we're getting revenue from this resource now. I'm sure it's the same with uh, all $7 Twitch and dollars of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But now Twitch can do a little more and, like, distribute a Loot Crate-like thing called Twitch Prime. I don't know why they decided to do that, but all I do know is that you get a free subscription to a particular streamer, so you can send them $5 a month without actually sending them $5 a month. And that's pretty cool. So free it money does. for a streamer. Yeah, I guess and you then, get like, free money. And then the free gaming stuff in games. It's like there was a Hearthstone hero that you could get for this month of Twitch Prime. There was also some boss in Smite, I think. I may be wrong. I want to look this up. Huh. So it sounds like Amazon is seriously pulling their networking level, lever, lever, whatever the hell you want to yeah. pronounce it as. Probably. And and connecting with everybody to try and do the the gaming stuffs. Which is kind of both really impressive and amazing and terrifying at the same time. How so? Mostly just because again I, I to make the analogy of like I feel like suddenly Walmart and Target or whatnot are pulling strings in my video games. Get out of my video games. Doesn't mean they're gonna do anything with it. Not yet. Not but yet, no. But like, how far does this rabbit hole go? We didn't even know there was a rabbit hole until like what two days ago. This got announced. Well, this got shown to me two days ago, anyway. So, well, I mean, everybody's is, uh, the bunch of the guys on Fort Aspenwood started talking about it like two days ago too. So I feel like it's a fairly recent development. And another thing that got added to Twitch was Twitch video support. And I don't mean, like, stream highlights or 
stream clips or even just stream video on demand. I mean, you can actually upload videos to Twitch now, and that's kind of cool. At least to me, anyway. I have a new place to put my Let's Plays, and a lot of people also have places to put their videos that aren't on YouTube. And their shitty service. To but, me, I feel like uh, it's just like, wait, so the video service can host more videos. It's more of okay. a service, but... Right, well, I mean, you're, you're ruining my joke here. Okay? Well, it's, I, Work with saying me here. from what I know is from Twitch. Sorry that I'm ruining oh, your joke. it's a cute little puppy. Where? Sorry, my screensaver just kicked in. <laughs> 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 Happens well, a lot during the podcast when I'm just sitting here rambling and... I have like a four or five minute screensaver timer. Mostly for the purpose of that if I'm doing other work in my room. It just like, oh, look at the puppy. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, wait, what? What? You have this actually in the notes as Twitch Loot Crate. What What actually is that? Is that just That's part of Twitch the Prime, Prime package? That's Twitch Prime. It's not a, it's a service they provide where they give you free things every month. And they give you discount codes. So it's the not Twitch a physical loot box. Crate is part of Twitch Prime. T- the Twitch loot crate thing is basically Twitch Prime. Okay, is what I that's, understand it as. That's gonna get confusing. Don't name things twice. I didn't name things Google. twice. Not you. I had not, the name. Let and me then finish I had my the sentence. Thing that describes it. I I said the executive peoples. They named it twice. No, I named it twice. Okay. I, they didn't actually name it. Don't it's called that. Twitch Prime, and then I said, in like after a hyphen, which would like describe the thing as the Twitch Loot Crate. Say so go, so, but you need coffee, dude. Okay. Are you telling yourself you need coffee? You need coffee. I don't like coffee. You need something to wake up, dude. I don't want to wake up after Inject this. Inject cocaine going to into sleep. your bloodstream. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> We did that to a rat in college. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. What happened? He did all the things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. He was in a box, and he went from that into the box to that into the box, and then back again, back and 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 back. And he looked at us, he's like, and then he went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and he looked at us and went, cocaine's a hell of a drag, boys and girls. You just see this rat with like white shit on his face. It's tweaking out. Anyway, we're getting off track. That's probably Twitch video supports out. Um, since this is kind of like a direct competition with YouTube, as opposed to sort of a competition with YouTube, where Go for Twitch it. only used to stream, will YouTube get their shit together and stop, like, not being transparent with people? I'm gonna put one dollar down to say no. Probably, yeah, no. I mean, I'm motherfucking Google. I do what I want, and this is why none of my launches of new products work. Yeah. By the way, if you didn't hear about it, like a couple of weeks ago, Google launched Allo, which is a direct ripoff of Telegram, instead of just improving Hangouts, which is the service they've been having for chat use for years. And Seriously. Guess what? It flopped. Oh, oh. surprise! Oh, that wasn't wow. in the notes, but I just I have the I, I just have to make fun. I I like Google, but they're kind of being evil, which is they're against their phrase these days. And I just after a certain point, you just watch them trip over and over again on the same problems. Google Plus is bad. This is why it's bad. No, it's good. We're going to force everybody to use it. And then okay. they stopped no using it. No one liked that. <laughs> yeah. And then they and, stopped that and, as a requirement for YouTube, so nobody has to use it anymore. Right. And that was really the only reason people were using it. <laughs> I mean, this this is this is not how you user base Google. Yeah. Or, <clears throat> alphabet. <laughs> yeah, whatever. The only people that care about that are investors. 
But, uh, anyway, enough shitting on Google. We can never shit on Google enough. Probably not. But probably enough for this podcast. Though, I mean, I love I love that Google search. I will say that much. You at least did one thing right. It was the first yeah. thing you did. Oh, hell yeah. And then it went downhill from there. God, you know what people... I want to hear how people, like, deduce that in a century or so. Yeah, these, uh, these two fucking college kids decided to write a program for the internet that would database a bunch of keywords from all these web pages and just go from web page to web page as fast as possible and and then you could search it and they made a good algorithm to search things quickly and it they called it a google like that number that's really big and it became really popular and then they took over the tech world and became skynet we don't we don't know how how we got from point A to Z five two, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Power corruption, I think. But anyway, got a lot of indie game stuff here on the docket today. Let's start with PewDiePie because I uh, don't know anything about that. Okay, so PewDiePie released a well, PewDiePie and. Shit, what was the developer's name? Whatever they team, whoever he teamed up with for Legend of the Bro Fist, <laughs> they made a mobile game called Tuber Simulator, and it's basically a YouTube simulator. It's actually kind of, kind of neat. In fact, I have it up. In How do you right now. do that? What? How do you what? Would, like, do you just use your camera and talk into it on your phone, and then it like no, puts you a skin like, over it or something? You make a room, and then. You have a character, you make a room, you put shit in your room, you make videos in this room, you get subscribers, you get views, which is a currency, and sometimes other currencies such as bucks to buy stuff, and you gotta order things online, wait for shipping. It's a clicker game. It's very much a clicker and wait <laughs> game, but it's not... Wow. It's kind yeah, of interesting. it sounds like it. Yeah. It's how I wish YouTube was. Getting subscribers I, I and views of... is not hard in this game, and there's a system called well, trending yeah. trends, where if you go to make a video, you get two topics for each video. Like, on my list right now, I have a gaming and sports video, and a uh, plants and science video, and in the upper part of the screen you have three trends that you can probably have for every day and if you play to those trends you get more views and subscribers i wish youtube was that easy no there is no place to tell what's trending for the week or day or whatever saturated so you market yes pretty much it is kind of mind-boggling to think of just how much freaking data YouTube processes at a time. Oh, yeah. Still pretty cool. Literally petabytes of information every day. Oh, yeah. It is insane. I kind of was hoping you would tell me that this game was would actually use some sort of shitty editor oh, mini God. game or whatever just so that like players would have to go through the stress of trying to edit a video and the mini game would be like really really time sensitive or whatever oh, God. so that you, you would simulate the agony of trying to Make a video out on video time. Video out yeah on time oh, God. and and lose subscribers if they got you know, they didn't get their videos on their weekly or their daily drug schedule of YouTube binging. And, and where you don't gain any subscribers, but you also don't lose any if you get them out on time. Exactly. And then you make a video of a game that's very boring, or you just make a video that's very boring, and then you just lose half your subs. And then you go back into the cycle of gaining hardly any, and then losing most of them. And then you uh, 
have a day where the computer crashes. Oh god. And and like you lose your recording as a random event or <laughs> you the uh the render takes a lot longer than you thought it would for some reason, just yeah, some mysterious yeah. reason and so then you're late and the render and then the render is wrong. <laughs> so you have to do it again. So then you got to fix it. But you find out late, so you like, so you like get subscribers that are angry, or oh, just yeah, slightly yeah. Do the, kindly uh, grumpy. The post upload edit, yeah. <laughs> or you have to put like a uh, what are those stupid annotations? You have oh to yeah, put an annotation annotations. in the video. No, I didn't really mean it this way. Please stop trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm looking at you, uh, guy with a laser dot pointed at my chest through my bedroom window. No, looking at you, dude, run. Oh, wait. Yeah, I've done that. Don't start any infinity effects here. Oh, I, I've, yeah. I have done that a lot, though. Like, I either forget to put annotations, or I screw up the render, and there's a whole extra, like, minute of nothing but me turning off the recording. And then the end card that's all like, oh, hey, here's these videos you can click on. Click on this penguin to subscribe. That, yeah, that sucks. What's worse is, like, when there's a whole, like, audio channel missing, so you don't hear game audio, or you don't hear me, or you hear none of it. That sucks. Yeah, I could imagine that. Yeah. Um... All that work, and then you just, like, Fuck, I gotta wait another four hours for a render. See, I at least have the, the easy way out when I do all this. Is You're doing it with a very clear means to an end here, uh, as difficult as it may be, and as, you know, accepting of the challenge as it should be. But anytime I sit here and stream record whatever, I'm like, huh, didn't record. That sucks. What am I doing next? <laughs> At the time, that is me. If that happens to me in a game, I may not even go back to it. Ooh. So I don't know if it'll record again or not. I sometimes go back to the game I record it, though. Like there are a few guys in the Fort Aspenwood server that make me think of you because they're trying to just get into either streaming or recording or something for their own. I think half the time it's just for their own like personal reasons mm -hmm. uh, rather than to be like any sort of big personality on the internet. But um, I get these guys that are like, how do I record it? And everybody's just like, download OBS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every That's single person, download OBS. Pretty much. Mm. How do I record you, you, you record it. You gotta set Let's... it up a bit, though, to make it work right. Some True. Most dreaded thing I'll ever see from OBS is encoding overload. Turn down your settings. Lol. In the middle of a recording, yeah. And that just means the thing's gonna fuck up, and you need to stop recording and redo it, and turn before that, you gotta turn down the FPS counter. <sighs> I mean, does that happen when it's at 60 or 30? or? That happens a lot when I record to 60 FPS, which is what I try to record to. If it happens, I just gotcha. tone it down to 30, and then it's usually fine. But lately, I haven't had that issue very often, so... It's just huh. with some like really graphically intense games... Though with those, I usually just get so much FPS drop, it's not even worth playing. So, anyway. <sighs> tell us about Night in the Woods there. True. True, true. Okay. So, Night in the Woods hadn't put an update out in a little bit. Mostly because they are getting near... I mean, they've been in crunch time for a while, but they're trying to get their game pushed out. We don't have a hard release date yet but they still look uh, pretty good for before the end of the year, which was what they were saying. Um, 
I'm personally very firmly on the boat of I'd always rather wait longer for something to come out good than to get it now and it be half baked. Oh, yeah. um, so, um, I mean, if they pushed this back another year, I, I wouldn't even bat an eye. Um, but no, they're on schedule. The, um, they are talking about how they work a lot of seven day weeks um, and they had to kind of take some time off to just be comatose for a day or two. Um, yeah, I can't blame them for that. Yeah, no, they, these guys work super fucking hard. A lot of game devs do. It's it's kind of a near thankless job. Like, I always, <laughs> even though there's a lot of us that harp on Anet, I, I do feel sorry for them sometimes because I know there's a lot of them there that really care and are just, like, bending over backwards to try and make it work. And oh, yeah. Got a lot of people. But, um, so they did a lot of shows. They did a lot of, uh, general work um going around they uh were up in seattle or at least had somebody uh friend wise in seattle where one of their swag stickers um that's the logo of night in the woods with the nitw acronym uh actually showed up in some bar in seattle on one of the like graffiti walls that you get at a lot of such bars mm. Some places that's dive bars, other places it's like it's part of the uh, atmosphere, if you will. Like Cleveland has a lot of that around here too, and some of the places that have it are nationally recognized chains and establishments. So it's kind of hard to call them a dive bar. <laughs> if you're wondering, one of the places is called Melt which has been on the Food Network more than a few times. Melt. Yep. It's a really damn good bar where they make Texas to toast-style grilled cheese with coleslaw, and then they decided to make them crazy grilled cheeses. Oh. And hamburgers, too. Oh, my God, gimme. Like... We're talking toast that's like an inch thick at least on as the bun on either side. And um, they're like half pound burger patties usually too, I think. They're oh. pretty huge. Oh um, my god. But one of my favorite sandwiches is called the Dude Abides. It's very oh. clearly a um, Big Lebowski reference. Yeah, yeah. And you're it goes after the bowling pin idea, so it's um, it's a grilled cheese with mozzarella and provolone, and um, spaghetti marinara sauce with two giant meatballs and a row of mozzarella sticks. Your bowling ball and pins. I uh, I want to go to cheese. this place. Oh my god, it's great! If you ever came to Cleveland, I would take you. Actually, you could be to. a little closer. They put one in Columbus just a few years ago. I got to go in the first year that it was open. So that's a little closer to you. That's half of the state of Ohio instead of the entire state of Ohio. <laughs> well, if I happen to go there, I will definitely get the dude abides, and I will be tweeting and Instagramming the ever-loving shit out of it. Well, Holy fuck. It what? You measure the weight of those sandwiches in pounds, so you will definitely be uh, tweeting the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I will tweet it after I shit it. Yeah. I Actually, won't be tweeting the... the shit, but I will be tweeting the food. Yeah, the reason one of the reasons they showed up on Food Network is they're one of those places that has some sort of like man versus food style challenge. Oh. And they had it before that was a popular thing. Um, it's simply called the Melt Challenge, and it's their, um, a normal meal has coleslaw, uh, specialized kind of steak fries, kind of an idea that's like special seasoning, mm -hmm. um, and a grilled cheese of whatever choosing. So you get monster sized helpings of the two sides, and then a grilled cheese that is actually three buns or toasts, if you will. And is made with like five pounds of diff er, different cheeses. Good fuck. 
or maybe it's three pounds. Regardless, the entire mm. meal is well over five pounds worth of food. Mostly cheese too. Yes. It's yeah. It's and yeah, fat and grease. It's it's actually really hard to get through it. Um. Anyways, but yeah, night in the woods sticker at a bar, um, and a few other places. They went to Pax. Um, one of the gems I was talking about was they are feeling the pressure of having labored over almost three years of this project and you're getting a lot of different comments from people where it's quote going to be slotted next to other games it's going to be evaluated scored praised trash it's going to be put into the history of games now and forever kind of thing and you get people asking is night in the woods going to be the new undertale and the dev devs are going well internally i say no no one is going to do undertale again That'd be cool. And then you get other people that are like, Night in the Woods looks like hipster shit for Western garbage. Keep it off the PS4, you noobs. And I'm like, there's a lot going on in that comment there, Goku Gamer 666. <laughs> <laughs> I love these guys. They have such a great sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're they're feeling the pressure of like we are getting so ridiculously close to deadlines. We've demoed this game so many times that we don't remember when we demoed stuff, what month, what it was, where we were, what happened. And, you know, people are talking about it. And one of the big things is uh, one of our other podcast points is the PAX 2016 West video, the four fantastic indie games, uh, all of which were part of the PAX 10 indie games for uh, this year, which if you don't know, is where uh, a high uh, caliber list of ju judges um, choose their favorite games they've heard about and have been paying attention to. And of those favorites, they deduce a top 10 list that gets special marketing advertising treatment at the upcoming PAX event. Night in the Woods is one of those games. I think we mentioned that a few podcasts back when it was announced. Um, so, but they they were also featured in this like top four idea as the primary thing to go go see. And also at that same PAX event, uh, the devs from a fan uh, had been given. Well, they received numerous gifts and support from the fans at PAX, uh, one of which had provided uh, home-baked cookies. The cookies included a note that was not read by anybody until at least one of the devs had consumed an entire cookie and felt very strange afterwards, to which point it was noted, they were very special, only can be made in certain states like Washington <laughs> cookies. What I'm saying is there's weed in the cookies. <laughs> so, yeah, that was apparently an experience where one of the devs had to go through half the con high as a kite. <laughs> <laughs> that had to have been really, really entertaining to watch. Yeah, apparently there was a minor hashtag, or hashtag uh, Night in the Woods 420 Blaze It. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that same dev, actually, uh, he's the guy behind a lot of the programming mechanics of the game, because uh, it is a very small team. Uh, they originally started with just two people, and then quickly three. I think they're up to five or six now, though. Um, but he flew to Milan, Italy. And I probably said that wrong, because it's Italian. I'm sorry. <laughs> But yeah, right after PAX went to Italy uh, for an event called the Milano Games Fest. And this is actually something that I've never heard of before that looks really interesting. Uh, from their point of view, they say that there's a small set of games that one game is featured per night. And that's it. And they do like really special demoing and theming for it. So when Night in the Woods was there, they had little trees all around the room to make a fake forest, if you will, with uh, wood chip shavings all over the floor. 
and they had like lemonade and punch after in the back that had all been like fresh brewed like it was out in the woods or whatever and oh, so wow. like really high class event here that was uh really cool and one of the things they talked about at this event was something called yarn spinner which is actually something i hadn't known about um i might have heard about it in one of the other emails that i haven't actually gotten to read yet um because i'm a little behind but yarn spinner is actually something that they partnered with with another dev group to develop it's the um it's the narration mechanic guide for the game it's the engine that the narration runs on because there was such interwoven crazy dialogue trees out of this that they had to develop their own processing algorithm basically to manage that whole database what the user had chosen what options would be available to them and all that and when you do dialogue trees and development if you ever look at a behind the scenes or whatever it's a lot of connect the dots between various boxes of dialogue and it really does look like a crazy jumbled mess of yarn from thing to thing they apparently developed this thing called yarn spinner as a interpreter they call it and it's now like a you know standalone package thing that they're promoting as well that came out of the development of this game and it's not the only thing that you know was birthed into existence because of night of the woods so that's really cool they've got some interesting ip out of that awesome uh more awesome demoing of stuff and then finally we had just a um look at some list of things that they've put in i'm gonna skip over some things just because it is backer things and i shouldn't spoil too many hints but uh a dancing goat a demonic knife wielding pixel art rat an actual ball of pixel art rats there are a lot of rats in the game we don't know how this happened and we are open to explanations on how this happened. A cool possum, like the animal possum, not a possum person, there's a distinction. What? A oh, cat... right, animals, anthropomorphic animals, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Um, a mobility scooter cat. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just noting how much music they put into this game. That's uh, the two uh, new people that I don't recognize on the team now are both related to sound, either through straight up music orchestration or doing the Foley and sound effect kind of design for it. Um, also, Night in the Woods developer jargon, randos, non-named NPCs, usually walking around, go figure. Standos, the same idea, but they're not walking around, they're just kind of standing there. Get it? Hey. Um, notes on sound stuff. And that's basically about it. We're, we're it, they're thinking the next update, which usually is monthly, so probably near the end of October, since this was the September update that I just informed you all on. Um, probably end of October is when we will start hearing some pretty hard deadlines, you know, at least down to a week or something. Um, and I also apparently have to uh, reply to something that I didn't know I got to make sure that I get my copy of the game. So I have to do that too at the end of the podcast. Oh, and, and the dev team orders you to go outside and enjoy the fact that it is now fall because fall is the best season. And I totally agree with them. Fall is the best season. And anybody that says otherwise is dead to me. Well, that is a really good season, but I can't go outside because I'm here and there's going to be a storm in a few days. Maybe. Wait, what? Did you just say you can't go outside because it might storm in a few days? I'm t I'm here at the podcast. Shut up. 
I'm I, here no, I, right now on I'm, a podcast I'm, with you, Shro. Yep. And in a yep. few days, it will be storming, like hurricane storming. So I don't want to go yep. outside. Yep. Okay. So that, you just told me that yes. you're not going outside because the weather might change in a few days. <laughs> yes. I am not exactly letting you live this down. It is <laughs> it is going to be a thing. I'm going to type it into the chat right now on Discord, <laughs> and I'm going to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> it's going to have an at everyone mentioned. By the way, if you haven't remembered yet, uh, IA has Discord, and we voted to stick with Discord. So yes. get on the Discord, god so damn it. Click the link in the description somewhere, and it will take you to our Discord server. <laughs> and Tro is actually typing out this message right now. <laughs> I've said dumber things last night on the stream, okay? I, I, you probably did. Yep. I, I I can't vouch for that because I am a bad friend that forgets to click on streams when they happen. Well, fuck. So someone someone needs to poke me more about that. Okay, I was going to segue into indie game talk, but now that we're we on should. this, I should probably okay, say yeah. it. What? Okay, go say what. I don't know where okay. you're going with this. Uh, I may have to cancel one of the days or the entire thing for the Able Gamer stream I was going to do Friday and Saturday nights. Because there's a hurricane coming this way, and I don't know when the fuck it's going to hit us, if it does. And by us, I mean my state of Virginia. Uh, I'm currently watching this particular hurricane. Hurricane Matthew, as close as I can, but it doesn't look great so far. Like, the cone of uncertainty kind of veers to the west a bit and then back to the east, kind of going over Virginia on Sunday the cone of at 2 a.m. What? The cone of uncertainty. Well, that is literally it. what it's called, so. I know, but. Cone of shame. Well My dog is wearing the cone of shame right now. Oh. She keeps That's biting bad. her butt. She gets yeah. itchy during the uh, change of the seasons. So she's actually really, really super good about it. I can just call her over, even holding the darn thing, and she'll come over and sit in front of me and let me put it on her. So she has but, accepted her fate. Yep. She was super depressed for like the first two days with it, and then she got over it. But um, they actually, my mom was uh, trying to, she, rather one of her friends was mentioning it and couldn't describe it, but uh, mentioned new cone of shame options. And I think what they were trying to talk about is something I've seen a few times at work where it's more like a puppy neck brace. It's like one of those neck pillows you can put behind your head. Oh. Kind of an idea. But you have it has velcro on the ends and you wrap it all the way around the neck and it's kind of inflated like a balloon idea and so it acts as an inflatable neck brace and so same idea as the cone of shame but less but more of a flotation device yeah it, it's kind <laughs> of like a really awkward life preserver <laughs> it, it's it's the life jacket that may or may not be trying to slightly strangle you to death <laughs> So, but anyway, but, um, yeah, uh, the hurricane hurricanes. may hinder the able gamer stream on Friday and Saturday. So what you're saying that. is you need a life preserver neck brace. I need a life preserver neck brace for my internet because that's probably going to go down during the that time. So rather than try to stream, I may have to cancel. And I'm very bummed about that because I wanted to do this. Well, this to be honest, I mean... Exactly. Granted, I'm a lot more inland than you are, but uh, so you'll be by the fine. Time, yeah, we just get rain. Um, but usually by the time these hurricanes make it up this far on the East Coast, they have lost a lot of steam. Uh, yeah. So it's usually a hefty amount of considerable rain and then maybe wind. And That's power really loss. about it. No, nah, these things it, power loss, bad. not so much, because there's usually not too much that happens. But, I mean, now that I've said that, that means, like, you know, your town will be swallowed by a black hole of doom. Yeah, so, thank you, by the way. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you for that. Love you, Shro. 
hey, look at it this way. If it is a black hole, no one knows how you're going to die. You're just probably going to die. Maybe I won't die. It'll and it just might be frozen in time. Might be painful. It might be fast. It might not. Might not even be death. Yeah. Theoretically, one part of your body will die be faster than the other because gravitational waves, man. Um, so yeah, I actually wouldn't worry about the hurricane too much is what I'm trying to say, but I do because yeah. I want I, my sister is in Florida and she's in the path that's more in danger at this point than I am. Well, it's Florida. Yes. I'm sure homes and apartments are used to are built to withstand storm force winds of a category four hurricane, which it is right now, but I still worry. So there. Speaking of uh, spinning large storms of doom uh, on the Pacific coast, uh, or rather the Asian Pacific coast, there is another storm. Oh yeah. It, it is called a tropical storm Chaba. And I just have to say that Fort Aspenwood loves this tropical storm because oh the leader of Fort Aspenwood and his name Chaba. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chaba Moonheart. Oh god. <laughs> I I uh had recently downloaded the Wonderground app because I'm thinking of moving to that. And for some reason the Wonderground app decided to tell me about every tropical storm in existence and how far away I am from them, even though that the closest one is still 3,000 miles away. I have no idea why I'm being told this information. But yeah, then it proceeds to point out that over 6,000 miles away is Tropical Storm Chaba. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, I have to screenshot <laughs> this. <laughs> So Wait, we keep where is asking Chaba exactly. She's uh California. Wait, are oh, you I asking thought... about the person Chaba or the storm Typhoon Chaba? Typhoon Chaba. Typhoon Chaba. Um it said two thousand Thailand. Never mind. I was looking up tropical storm Chaba and it's like, oh, Typhoon Chaba popped up on Google. Thank you, Google, for being wrong. Not looking at that. So I saw something that was over around the Philippines. I'm hoping our friends over there are okay. Doesn't uh, look to be affecting probably it. Probably grazed them at one point, but maybe not. Yeah, it's more of hitting the Koreas and Japan area, it looks like. And typhoon does actually mean the same thing, so. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the Philippines are fine. There's nothing over there. According to Weather Underground, anyway. Which right. may mean jack shit. I don't know. Uh, they're usually pretty trustworthy. Okay. I've actually only recently discovered that they partnered with the Weather Channel, and there's like actual underground meteorologists and whatnot that appear on the Weather Channel, and there's like they like, have joint sponsorship with each other. It's kind of cool and kind of weird at the same time. I'm like, there's not Weather Channel people on the Weather Channel, mommy, <laughs> but they're still talking about weather, so I guess it's okay? Question mark. <laughs> So, I think that's a lot of information that we've thrown at people for a little bit. Let's have an Old Man Henderson break. Yes. And the winner of this story for the week is the tanker truck incident. By unanimous vote, as I recall. Yes. We didn't so, have many voters, but eh. Eh, it happens. Yeah. So, um, to catch up anybody that might not have been joining us the past few episodes. Old Man Henderson is a game-breaking character meant for the game of pen and paper Call of Cthulhu. That is a pen and paper game called Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is normally meant to be hysterically amusing about the elder gods and Lovecraftian lore, if you will. And everybody dies. In one way or another, usually by going insane, and then if not by that, by being killed by somebody that went insane, or just being killed by the Elder Gods themselves. And 
unfortunately, like all pen and paper games, if you have a bad GM, then they're not as fun as they're supposed to be. And this particular player had a really, really bad GM. And so he created the character Old Man Henderson, who had an impossibly long backstory, a crazy background and general character reference, and basically could be a game-breaking nonsense to try and have as much fun in this game where his GM was determined to screw them as unfunly as possible. And one of these various incidents where Old Man Henderson is known is known as the Tanker Truck Incident. Note that what I'm reading is from the player's point of view, so a few times I will say I and me, and do not be confused by that. It is the player. Now, time for what will forever be known as the tanker truck incident. Note that the is capitalized because this is, no matter what incidents in the future may involve tanker trucks, this is the definitive one. It started out innocently enough. Old Man Henderson left the stake out in a van outside the evil cult's meeting place to go get some hooch. The only people left there were the te detective and James Fink, which was the professor player's second character. Jimmy was gone because it was a school night and old man Henderson was a bad influence, but damned if he didn't have the kid's best interest at heart. Cultists see me leaving, and I had a very distinct appearance after all. Very useful in scoring total party kills <laughs> and discover my friends spying on them. The detective gets a pretty gar death, which I don't actually remember what that acronym means. And James dies like a bitch, but not yet. I'm on my way back walking along. The detective and James had been brought inside as part of a ritual to give Hastur an avatar in our world. He had been banished, and the only way he could come here is via a loophole. He could only use as hosts people who knew he existed and had thwarted him thrice. And then he had to make them drink the lifeblood of their closest friend to make the binding permanent. In case you're wondering, permanent binding equals a game over scenario. The first part of the ritual was completed, but before Hester could take control, the detective broke James's shackles and he tried to run. He made it as far as the street when the detective, now Hastur, caught up with him in part demon form. Now, where this church, or for lack of a better term, was located, was at the end of the road on a T-shaped intersection. There was a gas station about three blocks away, which is where Old Man Henderson was while this was going down. Old Man Henderson sees the shit hit the fan and steals a half-full tanker truck that was refilling the station's holding tank. While I bring the truck up to ramming speed, I toss a 12-pound block of C4 in the passenger seat and rig the detonator to the airbags. Because Old Man <laughs> Henderson has this kind of skill and repertoire just available. Old Man Henderson then took a bracing shot of whiskey, jammed a knife through the gas pedal, and then jumped out of the truck onto his Heelys. Because yes, he wore Heelys. <laughs> yes, he modified his combat boots to have Heelys. I swear to God, I had not planned to have this happen. The Heelys just sounded like something fucking ridiculous enough to be in character. <laughs> he watched the truck ram the detective into the church, then blow him and all the cultists to kingdom come. The truck also killed James by simply running him over. <laughs> and that's when the back trail ignited, fire going all the way down to the gas station and destroying it because the, the, um, the hose from the tanker truck was still kind of pouring gasoline out of it. So this continues my streak of accidentally destroying anything that might lead people back to Old Man Henderson as all of the witnesses were killed. <laughs> <laughs> I took a moment to call Jimmy. Henderson here. Figured out what the nasties were weak against. What's that, Mr. Henderson? Point blank annihilation. Click. <laughs> and that's the tanker truck incident. When in doubt, set the entire gas station and surrounding radius on fire with Pretty explosives. Much. Pretty much.
So the more I hear about these, the more I want to play a tabletop game. I, I've paper, actually like looked RPG. into Roll Roll Twenty a little bit. Um, yeah. I would have to reread my system books before I could actually GM one again. Um, and I'd actually probably have to get a hold of Pathfinder or World of Darkness. Those are really, really in-depth, though. <laughs> that might be a bit much at first. But then again, that's what everybody knows, too, so maybe not. I don't know any of them yet. I guess throw me in hard, if that's the case. <laughs> like, throw me in real hard. Give me a, a PDF of the book Today. and then like have me read it. I'll be be I'll be ready. Yeah, that's basically what would have to happen. No, it actually doesn't happen that way. A lot of times, it's the uh, GM's duty to have the system damn near memorized, and then they either throw pre-made characters or blank character sheets at everybody and teach them how to fill them out, and then you go do stuff. There, it's like the untold part of pen and paper games is that they're can be entire sessions that are merely just the wind up to the actual game but um wow. that's usually circumvented in s such games with the gm having just a stack of characters that they have pre-filled out and just said okay everybody pick one so that's how that kind of goes it's like hitting the random button when you go to play a new game and make a character and you just said, fuck it, I just want to play the game, hit random. That's boring. I'd rather make a character before I do it. Yeah, I think a lot of people would rather make the character. That's half the fun of the game is making a character. Also, this leads into one other thing that I didn't put in the notes, but I'm totally um, writing out as one of the things to, damn it, I can already feel the like second wind of I'm motivated to do things again and go back to working on the IA website or whatever. I'm never going to sleep today. This is going to be bad. Um, but no, uh, IA movie night. Specifically, mm -hmm. I would love to watch Journey Quest and The Gamers, which are all about D&D &D and pen and paper games and sort of LARPing, but not really. But yeah, so they're crazy hysterical. They are actually kind of coincided with the jokes like I, I cast Magic Missile into the darkness because the original Gamers is really old. It's early 2000s, if not 90s. Oh God. So, but yeah, they are now crowdfunded and have been making new stuff. Uh, they're in season three of Journey Quest. And I actually can't wait to go watch some of it. So, because that almost didn't get funded. I actually don't know how it got funded because they were sending us the, well, we tried, folks. If you still think you have anybody that you haven't messaged, let them know. Um, but we still got like half the bar to go and we just don't know if we can do this. To be followed up 24 hours later with, we funded it. And everybody was like, oh. Well, that's good. How did we do this? <laughs> Magic. Or a really generous donation from one guy. I would say, somebody wrote him a blank check. Yep. So, yeah. One of the things that IA is going to get back to doing, since uh, I'm kind of back in full force again, is... Finally! Fucking movie night! That being movies. I mean, we can watch the fucking movies of pornography another night if we want. Maybe the same night. That's... Never really stopped IA before, I suppose. Speaking of porn flicks, there's an Overwatch one out now. Or either it's out N, it's either out as now. As in singular. There is an there's Overwatch be one. porn film. I don't know if there's more, but it's like it's a Brazzers movie, apparently. I don't know if it was oh, a parody God. or if it's a real thing, but it features Reaper and Widowmaker. And wow, it's just very—it's very dumb. Isn't most porn? Most porn films are dumb. I'm sure. Like I remember seeing a Simpsons one. Oh, pizza oh. guy! I don't have any money. Can I spend half of your shift fucking you, silly? Instead, that won't pay my bills, man. I need to go to college. I actually almost had that happen to me as a delivery boy. Oh God. 
Yeah. They they tried to pay me in lottery tickets. Oh, that's not sex, dude. And well, no. When when I turned that down, they they got a little too close. I'm like, I'm sorry, I have to go and like that. Some other person in the house, like, all right, I got money for him. Like, oh god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> they like had me invited me like through the front of the house, like all the way to the back of the house. They're watching like Wheel of Fortune smoking up a storm. There's a cloud. I'm like, oh god, there are movies about this shit. And they don't end well. The ones that do, well, eh, I don't know. I think maybe they lose their no, job at the end. Because as I'm leaving, the like estranged boyfriend of somebody like showed up in the parking lot and started giving me evil looks. I'm like, I'm just the pizza guy. See the pizza box? <laughs> Weird family. It was, it was scary. So you were saying there were more indie games. Uh, there's a Kickstarter. Well, speaking of Kickstarter, uh, there's a game called Butt Sniffin' Pugs, and it's a very accessible, uh, indie game where you literally just are a pug and you sniff butts and you play mini games and stuff. I, are we talking about the dog or the dog? You are the dog and you sniff butts. Okay. It's a multiplayer game from what I've seen. Um. Uh, also, from what I've seen from demos of the game, it featured a rather interesting controller where it is a big tennis ball and a pug's butt. And you roll the ball to move around and you press the butt to sniff butts. Wow. That's as much as I know. Like I, I really don't know much about this game because I don't have it in front of me. And taking the time to look it up would probably like give me... Well, I should look that up, actually. That's all right. I'm already watching it. Okay, good. I don't have to explain it. As somebody yeah. that has worked with a lot of pugs, part of me is confused by this because pugs can't smell. <laughs> or at least pugs can smell and they try to smell, but they really just can't breathe properly. <laughs> so so sniffing things causes, causes breathing problems. I think we're going too realistic here little bit but the part where this is actually getting back on point is watching pugs try to sniff things is hilarious because <laughs> they do actually have to try really hard and they kind of get dizzy when they try real hard <laughs> and it's adorable and really silly also this makes me think of the x th or um x files um pugception youtube video Need to watch that later, but uh, we're kind of running out of time soon, so we should wrap this up. This group. nonsense. We can go as long as we want. We could, but I gotta go kind of soonish, and I don't want to go there over go. the time limit on SoundCloud anymore. That's three hours. Stupid SoundCloud. Yeah, I fucking hate SoundCloud. Actually, <laughs> at least the free account. I hate. I it. don't or... know why. Anyone would think that's a good idea. Yeah. Like, I, I love, I understand that you as a product maker, that, you know, if you're offering a free service, I should, you know, accept that it comes with limitations and, you know, that I actually have the opportunity to use your service for free. I get that. I, I try not to, you know, be too unappreciative. But at the same time, when you give me such weird restrictions and rules to do all this shit like spotify if i have to listen to your like screaming workers excuse for a song as a commercial again or you tell me that i can't use skips after you keep serving me songs that weren't even in the playlist i asked for and then i run out of skips because i don't have premium this isn't how you make me buy premium. It's how you make me turn off your app and use a different one. <laughs> yeah. SoundCloud, same idea. Except minus the skips and stuff. Like it's a continuous stream of audio, but that's on true. Back end, if you go over three hours of audio mm -hmm. for your free account, they hide the rest of your audio. You can't do shit with it. You can't delete it. You can't edit anything. And you can't upload anymore. You have to delete 
the newest audio file to be able to see the older ones. And they seem to update every update their web pages and shit every hour, so you won't be able to see any of that new st any of that stuff you should be able to access until an hour later. And that is so fucking dumb and I I'm just very pissed. So SoundCloud community, we love you, but we do not like the back end of SoundCloud. Also, thank you for following us on SoundCloud. That that is actually kind of cool. It like keeps jumping up and down though. I think some of these guys are bots. A lot of them aren't, but we do have a few like bot followers that are just coming in saying, "Oh hey, you can get followers from this way." It's kind of stupid. But anyway. Yeah, I can help you there. Yeah. Let me so, talk about uh, Undertale's anniversary. Yeah, that's uh I don't actually know the exact date I'd have to wiki that. Um yeah, cuz a... I didn't get the game until the fall, but uh I know it actually came out earlier in the year. So yeah, it was it was recent and lots of creators are releasing cool stuff for it cuz it was a great game. And one particular thing, like there's a pretty decent remix thing for the anniversary that's like 30 minutes of a bunch of the songs remixed by a bunch of different artists um, all put together as a medley. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, but it's a good listen. I, I recommend it. Um, but then one of the other ones that caught my attention is a uh, drawn animation with uh, Alphys and Undyne. And it's a super heavy feels trip, but um, and it's kind of adorably cringy at times too, because of that. But I loved it anyways. Um, but the whole thing is actually voice acted, and it's kind of set before the game takes place when Undyne and Alphys would have met. Kind of an idea. Oh. It's like a fan theory of how they might have met. So. Yeah, I, I, I recommend it. My only actual thought is, uh, as far as critique goes, Alphys is really small, standing next to Undyne. Well, in kind the of, whole animation. Kind of is the case. She is small. Yeah, I, I guess I think of her as bigger than she probably actually is. And granted, the way the, the video, or rather animation, uh, works out, she has to be small anyways. Um... So I can't really complain all that much, but yeah, voice acted animation thingy. That's like five minutes long. Super good. Check it out. Type in Undertale Anniversary. It's pretty much the first hit. I still haven't seen all of it because when you showed me, I was doing something else. So I'll have to give that a look. Uh, what else we got? Why, why are you telling me that there's sperm in your mouth? <laughs> uh, this isn't really gaming news and it's, just a really short story, but yesterday I tried a different kind of sushi called Ikura, which is a salmon egg. And holy shit, there was a lot of that in, in this particular piece of sushi. Like, half the thing was rice, half of it was this, the, the egg, and it was all wrapped in seaweed. And when I bit into the egg, I was not expecting the flavor I was. I might as well have eaten very watery cum. But yeah, it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. All right, noted. Yeah, that, that was don't, about it. I had don't eat fish gum. Got it. <laughs> I had salmon sperm in my mouth. That that's what happened. Salmon eggs, but still. You crack salmon the egg, ugly. you have the sperm inside it, and it's, eh. Well, yeah, it depends on if you know a, a fish jizzed on it or not. Probably did because it was a little sticky. No, they're already sticky. That's just because uh, fish. Now, if it was extra salty. It was not. It was actually very disgusting, and I probably won't ever have that again. Still love sushi, <laughs> but not that kind. Fair enough. Yeah, there's a wide variety of sushi out there. Oh, so. God, yes. My favorite so far is eel. At least in terms really? of the cook. The raw one, uh, yellowtail, is really good. I don't know if I've had eel. Eel is so good. I'm a big fan of spicy crab and uh, spicy tuna rolls. 
That's my that's where my stuff is. Not really, especially like, if you get those little right like uh, crunchies on it, and good amount of ginger and wasabi. I haven't really liked tuna that I've had at this particular sushi place, so maybe it's just me. But I'm. Not- I need to go to more places that actually make sushi because uh, I've only been to a few. Uh, the best one was by where I used to work. Uh, I'd sometimes go there after work on days that I got out early. And it was a Chinese restaurant, but it was like a sit down Chinese restaurant. Oh. And, but it had normal Chinese restaurant prices. Oh. So. Well, no, that was, it's like the best of everything. Oh, okay. Because it's really, really good Chinese food, and it's a really good atmosphere. They have a great menu, but you don't have to pay $15 for a plate. You pay like Uh, $8. Oh, that, it's like a China walk price. Yeah. uh, It, it it, It was, it was cheap Chinese food, but it's not. Not Actually, in cheap, cheap Chinese, Chinese place. Okay. Yeah, it's it's good Chinese food for cheap Chinese food prices. That's good. So yeah, and they had sushi there too. So awesome. Oh yeah. And let's wrap this up with some more indie games. Yes, please. Um. So we spent many a podcast. Uh, Basically just beating the dead horse that is No Man's Sky. Which apparently now there's a uh, there's a civil suit against them for false marketing. Oh god, really? Yeah, that's the last news I heard. I didn't look into it very hard, but I guess a bunch of people got together and are suing, saying that it was false marketing. Um, which I think is actually legal to attempt um there's a lot of protections put in for crowd-based stuff to begin with and i'm not entirely sure that the false marketing claim has any water to it considering that uh what they advertised while very wishy-washy and um not what people really wanted and expected if you can actually read and pay attention what the game launched as is basically what you got and what they promised so eh, i don't think it'll go anywhere but it's a thing that people are trying to do so more on that anyways the point of this is actually bringing up the indie game called Astroneer, like astronaut, but being an engineer, all in one word. Oh, yeah, that looked fun. That I had never heard about until we watched the Night in the Woods related video that brought up a few other games, and we just kind of kept watching. And Astroneer was the second game brought up. It actually pretty much looks like No Man's Sky as far as the planet based thing. Everything's in like weird pastel colors and spacey and whatnot um but it's a third person game not first person and though i think you might be able to do first person and unlike no man's sky where you're mining resources and it's kind of really poorly done and you can't really do anything with those resources other than just kind of loosely upgrade your ship and it's not entertaining or fun or whatever um astroneer actually let you do things with the resources and build things and build new spacey things and build uh, forts and whatever with it. As and even well change as the environment have... too, from what I've seen in the trailer. Right. I was going to say, and then there's this terraforming gun where you use it to mine all the resources by literally just warping a hole into the ground and taking the resources that are revealed and doing so, or just using ground that you've already sucked up and warped to make new ground kind of a la starforge style you kind of just point your cursor in an area and it adds or subtracts from the world yeah it i would say it just molds the uh ground format it was really cool 
And it's not voxel based before anybody making the Starforge connection notices that. Or Minecraft. But yeah, it seems to be a much more organically shaped thing. I would actually peg it to be a Unity engine thing, but I don't think it actually is. I hope it's Unity. Give them some more love. And I just love how I love the engine. For recording. I would say the Unity engine is really interesting. So it's going to do serious work. It's already doing serious work, but. For also recording, a, I fucking a buttload of furry porn, but that's okay. a different, different aspect. Speaking of furries, we need to play Paladins. Yeah, that's a thing we should do. Yes. Speaking of furries, also the other really big indie game that was on that list that I actually knew about from the PAX Top 10 is also in the uh, four game video that we saw with Night in the Woods called Secret Legend. And it is a very Zelda-esque style little game that's a JRPG where you're a little fox. A little warrior fox. You oh have your God. sword and your shield and you go running around and you kill bad guys and monsters and whatever and you collect the loots which is kind of a weird loot system in that like that's your goal is to upgrade yourself and get better loots and kind of explore the world and I don't entirely know how it works but I guess it's not like pre-programmed like if somebody goes to the same dungeon uh, where they found loot and what they found is going to be different than what you found and where you found it and that kind of a thing to some degree but it's not like crazy procedural generation it's somewhere in the middle as I said I don't really understand it enough to really explain it well the game's still kind of hush demo kind of aspect but apparently it's being made by one dude, literally one guy, in Nova Scotia, Canada. Wow. And it's really, really pretty. It's got a good fight mechanic, a good system. Um, it like has really crazy bloom HDR lighting to it. So it, it's a 3D game with that's. It's got simple looking graphics. Like trees are cones kind of a thing and you could but when you interact as the world as a whole it's just really really pretty so i'm super excited for that oh and it has one other mechanic is that uh, a currently undeciphered language that uh your character oh. at least is what everybody and everything around you is how your character sees it um they speak in this weird language. There are markings in this weird language. All the signs are in the weird language. Uh, I don't know if the character also speaks the weird language or not, but uh, you have no idea what is being said and what's going on, even as you might engage in dialogue. So, huh. that's so you have to decipher the language yourself, then, or do you just get? That? I'm not even sure the language is decipherable, to be honest. But we'll find out more. It's uh, another in-development game. So, But I'm excited for it. So, Did you follow the Y2K idea at all? I was a little more lost. Sort on that of. Uh, it was described as an RPG similar to Earthbound and Persona. And with yeah, a little the bit of the, the DS Mario RPGs, whatever they're called. I think it's... Uh, Mario and Luigi oh, Superstar Paper Saga Mario. was one of them. Paper Mario? Ooh, that yeah, was Paper Mario. Okay. Yeah, Paper Mario. So, uh, yeah, I didn't it was uh, kind of a role-playing issue. Yeah, I uh, didn't quite understand the story. It was like, so. you had a dead friend, and someone found your dead friend's ghost in a cave, and you go explore the cave. So, so they're kind of not dead anymore? <laughs> well, they're ghosts, so they're kind of dead. But they still have a presence, I guess. It's like, not all dead. He's just mostly, mostly dead. Mostly dead. Kind of a ghost, almost. I'd ha I need to kind of look at it again. But, yeah. It does look interesting. I might give it a look later. And I'll leave a link to this video in the description box. Yeah, we should. I kind of want to leave a link to this char I found earlier, too. 
pretty char. Mm. It's not porn for once. It is a pretty char, but it's kind of unrelated to everything we're talking about. It's gaming. It counts. It's gaming, no, but we're I not know. talking about Guild Wars. We could always talk about Guild Wars. I actually really nothing have been about. getting into... Well, I mean, there's the New Living Story stuff, but I yeah. still haven't explored that yet. But I have been exploring Heart of Thorns. Um, I, I, I really like gliding. I already bought a custom glider. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um... That that's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to getting more gliding masteries. Um, I both love and hate the fact that all the masteries require you to actually get experience and play the game before you get them. Yeah, um, that, that's dumb. It's dumb. It's a it's a roadblock. It needs. To it stop. is a roadblock. Well. As I said, I love and hate it. I think it's great that they did something to keep everybody from just going. Well, spent an hour grabbing all the hero points. Let me just, you know, click my way through the entire escapade and be done with it. Yay, done. Okay, bye. And never touch it again and have all the stuff versus, you know, we actually. Good God, man, could you blow your driveway with the blower any harder? I'm trying to record a podcast here. I couldn't hear the blower, so. Oh, uh, well, it's very loud on my end. Um, it's like a lawnmower in my yard that you can't hear, and probably true. no one else can hear. Meanwhile, you can you guys can hear my neighbors playing basketball across the street, which makes no sense to me, but whatever. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I think that it's nice that there is something to, quote, slow you down. Um, but it is also at the same time kind of a, like some of the basic stuff that you need pretty quickly. And I'm like... <gasps> I need it so bad, but I have, I'm so far away still. Like, I was just really glad that I got explorative with the mastery window right off the bat. And as soon as I finished basic gliding, which I didn't even know I was training for at first, um, I think I got half that experience without actually even being in Heart of Thorns somehow. I'm not even, I don't know. Um, but uh, as soon as I got that done and had to look at that screen hard, I actually switched over to the uh, next thing with the uh, Itzel Frog Hylic guys, which turned out to be a requirement for progression of the story. So, <laughs> yay, sure, yay. for being preemptive, because that was already done, and I didn't have to, you know, go grind to continue the story. Yeah. So, on the other hand, I think that momentum is about to hit a brick wall because now I'm in the next map and I don't have that stuff trained yet. Mm. Yeah, you do need the uh, I want to say New Hawk stuff. Maybe a little bit of New Hawk and whatever the uh, Exalted. Yeah, that's what I'm in. The Exalted stuff. So But um So yeah, I I'm doing work getting stuff done there. I've on two TLC rallies already and a Univ rally. I've been um, part of at least a halfway through a guild mission, anyway. Yeah, I think that was the Univ rally. They it, they ended up actually doing guild missions for a lot of it. So, though it turned out that they were doing world versus world guild, guild missions, which is completely new to me. So we actually did stuff in world versus world to do missions. So, that's cool. You know, that's a thing. So yeah, I'll, I'll update more on that, and who knows? Maybe next podcast I might have actually commanded a little bit again. We'll see. Yay! Oh, and I wish I could have screen capped it, but just as a, I decided not to, simply because there was so much talking that what happened. Uh, the Guild Wars Two chat box truncated the conversation. So only half of, even when I scrolled all the way back to the top of the chat box, only half the conversation showed. Last night in a rally, um, we got seriously overrun by a Blackgate um, blob. And I had a crap ton of shaky chests, most people call them. The little chests that appear above your mini-map. Oh, those. Uh, I had a bunch of shaky chests that I had to open. So after I had, we'd all been wiped and I died, uh, I went through all of my shaky chests, which turned out to be like over a dozen of them. 
And so it took me a while to click through them all. And so as I'm doing this, I notice that one of the Blackgate guys came over to my corpse and then did slash sit next to me. And I just fucking died. Just like, because he's just like emoting sad things over my body. So there's a there's a trick in world versus world. You're not really supposed to be able to pull an enemy's name um, because they're your enemy, and that just creates all sorts of problems. If you can just you know click somebody and you know flood whispers to them and piss everybody off, that would just yeah that'd be bad. So, um, but there's a way to do it. If you look at your block list, you then click somebody and block them that still works. And if you block somebody, you get their account name. And so if you know, right, if you know who's already in your block list and then block a new person and look at the new name in your block list, if you manually type in that name with a slash whisper, then unblock that person and then whisper them, you can start talking to them. This is what's known, or this is how what is known as a rage whisper is done in World versus World, because you will get people that are really salty about being killed by you or something, or <laughs> something you've done, and they will go through this process to simply, you know, try and troll you and insult you, and you fucking cunt, so I'm gonna shit on your mouth. <laughs> bro he's salty so yeah it there's actually a few different threads in fort aspenwood's forums alone and i'm sure on every server's forums where they they trade rage whispers that everybody's gotten from the enemy so yeah i i whispered this guy and we ended up talking for literally like an hour in whispers back and forth about all the crap that's happened in the last year and all the nonsense with the world versus world tears and stuff that I've, I've talked about many years ago. Um, I don't know if I talked about that in the original podcast or not, but yeah, maybe something for another day. So, but yeah, Guild Wars doing stuff. There will be more stuff. I, I'm hearing something about leaks for an expansion too already on Reddit. I would say, topic for next week because those are all yet unconfirmed last i saw but already hints at new elite specializations and crystal desert i thought it'd be like the fire area ring of fire more of that place why not both true so the ring, the living story season three is taking us to the ring so right just be like, don't know but more on that later We've already gone a little more over than how long I thought we would go. So Sorry. we should wrap it up. Damn it, Tro, you and your mouth of talking. Old Man Henderson, 0. 0.5 on the scale. <laughs> little We're only a little bit off track. Only a little. Anyway, thank you all for joining us for this kind of long podcast. <laughs> Still very fun, though. <laughs> That's what I say to that. Well, all right then. Can you hold that for the outro? <gasps> I haven't done it yet. I haven't started it yet. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys for listening, and Shro and I will see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> and I'm out of there. <laughs> My uh, lips feel weird now. <laughs> how long did you go on for? Like 20 seconds? Uh, was long, long. I don't know. Longer than that, probably. Uh, I could hold my breath for over two minutes when I was on swim team, so. <laughs> Challenges of uh, breath capacity are probably not a good betting strategy. Oh. Because then I can make fart noises for minutes. 
That I would pay to see. If I had money. Sweet, I can make money off of this. Take it to YouTube, man. We already did. Oh, uh, yeah, technically, actually, yeah. So if you want to pay Shro to do that again, I mean, here is his bank account number. <laughs> Yes, my checking account is four two two zero nine six. All right, hit the button already, damn it! Fine, God.